Good evening and welcome to the Stafford Teen News Newsmaker segment. I'm Kelly Colon. This evening we'll be talking to Norman Schools, the owner of the Conway House located in Falmouth, Virginia. We'll be talking about the history of the Conway House and Moncure Daniel Conway. Good evening Mr. Schools and welcome. Hi Kelly, welcome to Conway House. Tell us a little bit about the history of the Conway House. Um, yes, I'd be glad to. Uh, the Conway House is located in Falmouth, Stafford County. Uh, Falmouth was a town that was um, um, created by the act of the Virginia General Assembly in 1724, uh, 27, excuse me. And um, uh, it is a um, historic district. Uh, the Conway House was built in 1807. This house was a stop on the Trail of Freedom. Can you inform us about that? Uh, yes, um, it was included in the Trail of Freedom because of Moncure Daniel Conway. This was his childhood home. And um, he was an abolitionist and he was uh, probably the most radical and outspoken abolitionist produced by the South. Uh, he also was ostracized and um, run out of Falmouth because of his uh, radical beliefs of abolition. Uh, also, the house was designated in 2004 by the National Park Service as an Underground Railroad Network to Freedom site. And most people think of um, houses that are uh, designated as Underground Railroad as places where people hid with secret tunnels and secret rooms. And that's not the case with the Conway House. Uh, the key word is network and the Conway House was included in the Network to Freedom because of the large number of slaves that were here and they were identified as a group from where they left to where they went to seek freedom. Can you tell us how the location of this house helped the slaves escape from the Civil War? Well, sure. Uh, during the Civil War, Falmouth was very strategically located. Uh, it was about halfway between Washington, D.C. and Richmond, so it was a very strategic area for uh, troops that were uh, building up and, and maneuvering and um, um, fitting in with the strategy that the Lincoln administration had for um, conducting the war. Um, being situated halfway, Falmouth was occupied early in the war, uh, April 1862, and when the Union Army came here, that offered an opportunity for the slaves to self-emancipate themselves. The Union soldiers almost destroyed this house, but when they saw the picture of Conway, they stopped. Why do you think that, was ha that happened? Well, Moncure Conway was a minister of the uh, First Unitarian Church in Washington, D.C., and while he was there, um, there was a uh, someone that knew him who was in the army, who was here in Falmouth at the house and recognized uh, the portrait of Moncure Conway and he called out to the other soldiers to, to stop any destruction of the house because this was a house of an abolitionist. Also, the, the Union officers called in the house servants, which, which were Eliza and Dunmore Gwynn. And, uh, and little Eliza, she was kind of a spiffy uh, soul, and she sort of set the Union officer straight that this was the house of an abolitionist, just as good an abolitionist as any of you. Was the house ever severely damaged during the Civil War? If so, was it restored? Uh, no, it was not severely damaged. Uh, the house was used as a hospital quite often during the war when it was first occupied, and also during the Battle of Fredericksburg, during the Overland Campaign, which was the Battle of the Wilderness in Spotsylvania, it was again a hospital. And when the Union Army was coming back um, from further down south, Sherman's Army from North Carolina, after the, um, Lee had surrendered, they had to pass this way to Washington, D.C., and the house got used as a hospital again. Um, there were a number of times when the house, I would say for about at least a quarter of the war, uh, at least probably a year off and on that the house was occupied as quarters and a hospital. So they generally took care of a place that was a hospital and didn't do a lot of destruction. Okay. Can you give us an overview of the history of the Conway House before and after the Civil War? Well, before the Civil War, um, uh, Moncure Conway's father was the magistrate of Stafford County for quite a few years. Uh, the family was an old Virginia family, a uh, slaveholding family and an aristocratic family. 
And so Conway House represented that wealth that slaveholders had. And uh, Conway, Conway House also was the, uh, I guess I want to say, the site of a family that was very di divided by the issue of slavery. Um, Conway was ostracized uh, from his family. He had to leave his home. And uh, then when the Civil War did um, take place, his two younger brothers joined the Confederate Army. So it was truly a, a family divided by the war. Uh, after the Civil War, um, the house was occupied by the Daniel family who had lost their home, Crow's Nest, and that was a house further out in Stafford County. A uh, very prominent house, but it was shelled by a Union gunboat, caught fire and burnt down. And so the Daniel family, which were related to the Conways, and if you remember, Conway's name is Montreux Daniel Conway, uh, the Daniel family was allowed to live here after the war. Uh, there were a number of families um, through the years that owned the house up until my wife and I purchased it. I think we got the house in 1998. Why did you decide to purchase this property? Well, I've, for many, many years, ever since my childhood, I've loved history and I love architecture. And um, I, I just wanted a historic home of my own one day, so this was sort of a dream that came true. The Conway House is on the National Registry of Historic Places. What does that mean to you as an owner? Well, uh, to me it's very important that the house was put on the register. Um, it's, um, it means that the house is recognized for its history uh, and also it helps to um, ensure that the house will be preserved for future generations so that they can learn about the history, they can learn about Montier Conway, and enjoy also the architecture of the house. Tell us a little bit about Moncure Daniel Conway. Sure. Um, he was a very unique person who, who, I think the lesson that he gives to us um, today is that he was someone who stood by his beliefs no matter what it cost, and it did cost him. Uh, he was the eldest son. He, there was an older brother who died, but uh, back in those days, the eldest son was the one that was going to inherit all of the family wealth and carry that on. So he stood in line to, to inherit all of the slaves, but um, he, forgave, he, he forgo all that, that wealth and the prestige of being an aristocrat. And it not only cost him uh, value-wise, but it cost him his relationship with his family uh, with his friends, and uh, he had to leave his home. It, it cost him his, his childhood home. What were some of his achievements in life? Uh, well, there were quite a few. Uh, he was an abolitionist, and he was well used by the abolitionist movement from up north because Conway being from the south, the northerners now could say that we have somebody from the south that's against slavery, that knows the institution inside out and is against it. So he traveled the uh, abolitionist lecture circuit. Uh, in 1863, he went to England. And uh, he, uh, one of his probably less recognized achievements, which was quite an uh, quite a, 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 a important accomplishment, is he advocated the uh, cause of abolition in America while he was in Britain. And that helped to keep the British government from recognizing this, the Confederacy as a legitimate government and thereby having more aid. And um, it, it helped to um, defeat the, the war effort that the Confederacy was, was waging. What were some of the great things that Moncure Daniel Conway did to help the slaves? Well, uh, of course, leading them to Ohio. And he led them to Yellow Springs. Um, he chose Yellow Springs because he knew that that was a community that would be well accepting of uh, uh, escaping slaves, that they could go there and they could set up their homes and find jobs and prosper without being persecuted. And uh, while he spent many years abroad after the war, he continued to help them financially. And each year at Christmas, uh, he would send money to George Hoadley, who was his attorney. George Hoadley was one of the founding members of the Republican Party and also later became the governor of Ohio. 
but through George Holy, Holy the um, Conway Colony would receive a monetary gift from Moncure Conway. So what were some of the difficulties that Moncure Daniel Conway ran into on this journey to Ohio? Well, there were quite a few. It was very dangerous. Uh, he had to, uh, probably one of the biggest obstacles was getting them through the city of Baltimore. Uh, arriving from Washington, uh, he was on one side of the city and the train that was, would take the, uh, uh, the freedom seekers out to Ohio was on the opposite side of the city. So to get from one end of uh, Baltimore to the other uh, it was quite an ordeal because he had to move a large amount of, of slaves and it attracted quite a, a, a bit of, a, of attention. Uh, in fact, it created a, a mob scene. And uh, one of the things that was very difficult back then was the trains did not want to carry slaves on them. So he had a hard time there. Um, also, the Emancipation Proclamation had not be is been issued. So uh, technically, uh, all the slaves were subject to the Fugitive Slave Law of 1850. Uh, Maryland and West Virginia, which was still part of Virginia at the time, were slave states. So at any time, they could be arrested and they could be taken back and, and uh, into, into slavery again. So do you have anything that you'd like to add about Moncure Conway? Uh, yes, uh, some of his other achievements that I've, I failed to mention was that he authored over 70 books. Uh, his biography on Nathaniel Hawthorne is still the leading uh, biography and as well as his biography of Thomas Paine is still the leading work. Um, Moncure Conway uh, was very active in the in supportive of the uh, women's um, suffrage movement. He knew Elizabeth Cady Stanton and Susan B. Anthony, uh, the uh, very noted uh, English feminist Annie um, Besant, and uh, he also was very active in the World Peace Movement. Uh, was very good friends with Andrew Carnegie. In 1900. Moncure Conway addressed the Paris Peace Convention and laid down the basic tenets of the League of Nations that later became the United Nations. We'd like to thank Mr. Schools for being with us on Stafford Teen News Newsmakers. We've learned a lot about the history of this house and Moncure Conway. And Mr. Schools assured us that if we ever have any further questions, that we can come back and talk about them. For Stafford Teen News, I'm Kelly Cologne.